is Karen Gravestock. I am the Director of People and Place here at WWF UK and my remit as part of the LPC project, the Living Planet Centre project, was actually to oversee the transition of our people from our previous headquarters to this building, but also to make sure that we were delivering the inspiring workspace that we'd really set out to achieve at the beginning of the project. My name is Sarah Brunwyn. I'm an advisor to the Chief Executive working in his office. For the purposes of this project, I was the Capital Appeal Director and worked on solely this project for a number of years to make it a reality. WWF UK is a conservation organisation. We're a charity. We were established in 1961 and at that point our primary objective was to conserve species around the world. Our famous panda logo is uh, very well known. WWF has a very clear mission, which is to have a world in which people live in harmony with nature. And we've always focused on those areas which has the richest biodiversity, but is probably at the most um, exposure to threat and risk. In more recent years, we've broadened that agenda. So we've been very much more focused on sustainability as well as conservation. And that's where the Living Planet Centre comes into bear as an exemplar for demonstrating how sustainability can work in the built environment. Panda House, which was our previous HQ, we'd been there for over 25 years. It was a leased building and it was originally intended as light industrial units. It was never intended as an office space. It was a much loved building, but it didn't enable us to demonstrate sustainability in the way we would have uh, chosen to. We were offered a lead gift by a long-standing donor who never liked our previous accommodation. And he thought we needed something more befitting an organisation of our size, internationality and reach. So that enabled us to actually start thinking the impossible, or dreaming the impossible, which is, gosh, we could actually maybe do something. We wanted to see in a new building significant changes in the way we worked because we realised that that would be very helpful in us delivering more effectively on our mission. We were very aware of the fact that teams did not work together in the previous building and the way our furniture and design was set up didn't, it wasn't conducive to that. We saw this as an opportunity to have much more integrated working for people to get to know what other people did not to have their own desks so people didn't become too territorial and it has allowed a huge amount of interdepartmental conversations, engagement, understanding and a much broader opportunity for us to work in a more modern way. What people very much wanted was to have no directors in offices so we don't have not even our chief exec has an office people wanted a, an open plan layout one that used more flexible use of space so we didn't want just a desk for everybody as we've had before because we knew that that wasn't a good use of the space we wanted breakout space people wanted a quiet space that they could work we wanted more collaborative areas that people could work in so it was really about getting people to think about what activities they were going to be doing and then thinking about the space that would enable them to do that most successfully. It is very different, but I think having involved the people and kept communicating with them, got them involved, all of those different things have really helped to make it a success. In any procurement process, we have to go through a very clear and open tender board process. So we did that and we invited a number of manufacturers to sort of put in some pre-qualification questionnaires that they had to be completed. And we shortlisted down to four manufacturers that we felt we could work with, that understood our vision, not just for the building, but understood how as an environmental organisation, the sustainability of any product is incredibly important to us. Going through that process, there was a large tender board. I was on the tender board along with many of my colleagues. And we went through a very thorough process where Shinops and the other manufacturers were asked to present. They had to provide a great deal of information. And based on the outcome of that, we were um, able to award the contract to Shinops. We were aware that Shinops had a number of years ago provided furniture to the IUCN building in Switzerland. Again, another state-of-the-art sustainable building. In Europe, it's called LEED that they were after as opposed to Briam that we've gone for here. 
and we knew from IUCN's experiences of working with Shin Arps that it had been very positive and that the furniture was very um, simpatico with the sustainability aspects of their building. We were very keen from the very outset to um, achieve Briam outstanding if we possibly could. At the beginning of this project, that was a very, very far-flung dream because uh, that was a number of years ago. But we've worked very, very hard to achieve it, both with our contractors, the construction company, and all aspects of the building have now achieved it. So we have been awarded outstanding. We are one of a very small handful that have actually successfully managed to achieve that uh, accreditation level. It is the highest, very difficult to achieve. We also wanted to have it so that we can invite companies other people in, students, architecture students, to look at what a Briam outstanding building looks like so that they can think, gosh, that's fabulous, we can go and do that, we could design that, because ultimately with 50% of carbon dioxide emissions coming from the built environment, it's very important to us that we look at the sustainability credentials of every new building that's constructed, particularly offices. We've worked very closely with the team at Shinarps just to make sure that every piece of furniture that comes through the door meets the standards that we have, be it FSC or any other criteria under sustainability. So we have to be very careful about everything from plastics to metals, just to make sure that we're happy with the content, where they've come from, how they might be recycled. So our environmental manager was very close, closely overseeing that and working again with the team at Shinops. But also about coming up with different options. So we've got a variety of furniture in the building, so not just the desking and the chairs, which perhaps are the more straightforward pieces, but we've got some high back sofas, we've got armchairs, we've got breakout tables, the quiet booths where people can have some quiet, undisturbed working, right through to the more cafe style area that we have, where people can have informal meetings or eat their lunch, and the refectory table and the breakfast bar area that we have in our tea point, and they're really, really much used. People really enjoy using those spaces. People are much more mobile. People actually enjoy the physical space. They enjoy the variety of the furniture available to them. Um, I think that's made a huge contribution. It was really great working with the team at Shin Arps. They came up with lots of different ideas about different furniture products that we could use, different fabric colours and materials. But we also had the opportunity on more than one occasion to go to their head office and showroom in London. And that was a great source of inspiration for all the different swatches and different types of material and furniture that they actually had there that we could then really test out and get a feel for what would work well in the Living Planet Centre. My favourite part of the Living Planet Centre, bearing in mind this is a project I've been involved with since day one, um, I was always very excited about the um, benefit it would provide us with allowing the public to come in to see our work. Something we've never had before and I knew it would be a really great opportunity for people to actually touch, feel, connect and engage with WWF whereas probably for many years we've been a somewhat remote organisation and it has proven to be very successful. If I had to pick a real favourite spot I think it might be the gallery space we have on the entrance level. And this is the area just behind the WF experience space before you come into the workspace. So you can see through to the workspace through the glass doors. But you can also hear the children coming into the learning zone. You get a feel for the people going around the experience. There's people waiting in the gallery area to meet colleagues who are watching the screens. You're seeing our panderized sculpture as it turns as people move past it. And just getting that sense you're going through into the workspace, but you can really see WWF UK for the first time. We've never opened our doors to the public before. Um, and for people to be able to see who we are and what we do and what's behind the panda is just amazing. I think it's important for any organisation thinking about moving to a new office space or in even refurbing the space that they're in to think really hard about how do we want to use this space but also how do future generations of people coming to work for us, how do they want to work and we did take account of that because you've got people coming into the workforce now that aren't used to having a desk with a desktop 
computer and a printer beside you. That's not the way people are working now. They're working in much more agile ways with tablets and smartphones and being connected and wanting to just come in and have creative brainstorming sessions. So we tried to really take account of that in thinking about the space and it's worked really well. So we have got a real mix of desking areas, the breakout spaces, the quiet booths, the eat and meet areas, the gallery spaces, as well as our auditorium, which has the seating capacity for up to 152 people. So for us, it was very much about thinking, how could we use the space? And that was really important about getting it right. And then working with a furniture manufacturer who could really understand what we wanted to achieve. It was about building a, a building that could inspire, it could engage and it could educate. And we really have achieved all of those three things with what has been built here in the Living Planet Centre.